Anyway, hey James, how are you today? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good. I'm good, considering everything that's going on right now. But how how have you been? You know, during this whole pandemic and trying to keep yourself busy, how have things been going for you? Well, I'd be remiss not to mention just how weird the year year has been. So, you know, at the beginning of this, I, I just told myself, hey, let me do everything that I possibly can to continue to progress to first and foremost stay healthy. Yes. And hopefully not lose too much momentum. You know, I think it, it, it definitely felt easy at the beginning of this to sit on the couch and do nothing. But had I done that for a year, I don't think I would be feeling as good as I am today. So part of that has been doing, you know, Zoom acting classes. Luckily they figured that out. So been able to maintain work, um, built a whole gym in the garage, went a little too extreme on the fitness side. But yeah, I've just held myself accountable and uh, tried to continue. Obviously I'm in my studio now and I'm lucky to have this space. So I've been creating a lot of music. Yeah. And finishing up movies like uh, Stars Fell. Well, that's good. You know, I, I watched this film a couple of weeks ago. I had it over the holidays, so I caught up on a whole bunch of that. I got to watch it. And it's right. adorable. Like, it's just a fun little rom-com. And, you know, what I love about it, too, is you play this guy. He's, um, you know, he's an agent, big power guy, whatever. But he has scruples. You know, he doesn't want to date his um, his client, which I think, you know what? That's very honorable. Like, <laughs> I really like that about him. Was that one of the draws for you when you read the script initially? Absolutely. It was nice. You know, I read the script. It was one of the most just endearing, authentic, and genuinely sweet scripts I had read. You know, I've, I've been lucky to do some other darker, more intense, more raunchy projects, you know, all of which were fun. But I felt like especially this, you know, as times have had changed this year, yeah, it was important to bring just a positive outlook on things, especially to agents, which, you know, frankly, I don't think we've all, you know, we've heard some stories over the years, right? And yeah. it was nice to, uh, <laughs> nice to play an agent who actually had a good moral compass and was a gentleman. And, uh, you know, I think that uh, I hope to see more and more of that in the real world. I hope so too. So also, you know, it's fun too, because uh, here's a guy who is going back to his hometown for his reunion, 15, 15 year. Um, mm -hmm. First, I want to ask you, when you made it big and you had to go back home, what was that like? You know, it's always a little strange because the second that you do your first co-star on a television show, everybody, thinks, oh my Lord, you must make a million dollars a day. You know, they think, they think you've made it big well before you have. And quite frankly, I still don't feel that I've, I've gotten there in my own mind. So I recognize the luck I've had, the amount of success I've had, um, how rare that is. But to me, this is really just the beginning of chapter two. So I think that um, it's important for me to keep my mentality there and, and stay appreciative and humble. And that's part of how I believe I'm going to be able to continue to work for the rest of my life. Yeah, because it's it's interesting because in this story, you know, he feels everybody is expecting him to, you know, uh, have this gorgeous wife or girlfriend, whatever to bring with him. And he feels intimidated and he gets nervous. And, you know, he asks his client Madison to, to come as his date and who's gorgeous and, you know, seemingly they're the best looking couple and yada, yada. But um, it's interesting how people perceive, as you say, famous people. And when they make it to Hollywood or whatever it is, but if they come from a small town, I find that very fascinating because yeah, you're right. They don't really believe, like they think that you're just kind of playing it down. Do you find that, you know? Yeah, look, I think that there's a pressure whether you're a successful agent or even more so you're really in front of the camera as an actor, or yeah. musician, or entertainer. Of course, there's this, this pressure. People expect you to be something. And I think that if, you try and live up to it too much, you lose yourself. Right. So I'm going to always just continue to be myself. I mean, some of the, some of the aspects are glamorous, you know, and we get to tour and play in front of 10, 20,000 people. How do you not, you know, that's freaking cool. You know, if you get to go to a movie premiere, like even for this one, we got a drive through movie, which is a 20, 21 <laughs> take on movie premieres. That's cool. And I try and relish in those moments when they happen, but you know, not let them get to my head and just try not to care about what other people's expectations might be. Yeah, absolutely. You have great chemistry with Sierra who plays Madison in this. Tell me a little bit about, had you guys known each other before or did you just kind of meet up on this, on this movie and was it kind of instant chemistry with the two of you? Actually, yeah, we'd known each other for 10 years or something ah, like that. Old friend. And it was part, part of the appeal of doing this is I was like, oh, I already, I, I know some. We had the same uh, manager when we first were, I guess I first got to LA, wow. 
14 years ago. I am dating myself right now. Okay. But yeah, back in the day. So um, it was a great way to reconnect and definitely, you know, allowed for that immediate chemistry and uh, it was nice to avoid the awkward, like, hey, nice to meet you. We're going to pretend to know each other. Yeah, <laughs> we, have, we have to make out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Totally casual. Yeah. Totally casual. Yeah. And tell me a little bit about shooting this on location and what it was like. Um, it just really had that small town feel to it, which I love. You know, you just feel like, God, I want to move to that little city. You know, everybody's friends, everybody knows each other. Can't that was all bad. authentic. We yeah. shot in, it wasn't shot in Alabama. It was shot in Beaufort, South Carolina. Yeah. But beautiful. that town is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, most of these locations are just real locations. They're these cute little quintessential mom and pop shops that it's hard to explain. You know, I've filmed a lot of places before. Yeah. And when you're in a big city, like people stop and look like LA, New York, Vancouver, Atlanta. Everybody's used to it. Nobody cares. You're just filming. In Beaufort, People would stop and watch for the entire afternoon. I mean, it was so, and everybody would wave and say, come to my shop. And like, we'd go into a dinner and they'd stop the whole restaurant to come and take photos. I mean, it's a big deal. It was very, it was a big deal, but it made it feel like a big deal for us too. It was very endearing and the town, you know, couldn't have been more welcoming. Yeah. What's it like for you? Um, you know, I was, I, I, I've been watching you for years and I, you know, is there anything you can't do? Like you sing, you write, you perform, <laughs> you dance, you like, honestly, there's gotta be something in your closet, James, that you cannot do. You got to spill the beans here. <laughs> Underwater basket weaving. Yeah. Tried and failed. Tried and failed. Um, look, uh, there are definitely things I, I was far less good at. <clears throat> I, I, I made a decision at one point I was playing sports skateboarding, uh, riding horses for a while. And each one of those at some point in my life as a young kid, I was like, I want to do this for a living, you know, be yeah. professional. And I was lucky to realize that I wasn't as good <laughs> as a lot of the people around me. Yeah. So that I found myself in the arts, which, you know, is definitely where I do feel the most comfortable. Yeah. And of course, a lot of people know you from way back when, you know, as you said, as you're dating yourself, obviously from Big Time Rush. That was a huge deal. That was a big deal. You know, I, I, I had the opportunity to talk to Carlos Vega earlier in the year. He had a movie out with uh, his beautiful yeah, yeah. Lexa, you know, and it's a, and it, I, I wondered, you know, when you're, when you're in something that big and then you decide, you know, okay, we're going to split up. We're going to all go do our own thing. How hard is that, you know, to, to kind of wrap your mind around that and kind of start again, you know? It's, it has its pros and its cons. Um, we, we had worked together. <clears throat> it wasn't even the length of time that Big Time Rush was together. It was that it was in and out, <clears throat> pardon me, all day, every single day. Right. You know, we filmed a single camera show. So that was 12 hours minimum on a Monday. It could be 25, six, you know, day and a half into Friday days in the weekend. And then we'd be getting police escorts to catch a flight or fly private because we couldn't make a flight to play three concerts over the weekend, be back in LA by 6 a.m. to film Monday. Right. We did that for years on end. Um, and so it just, you know, it, it felt like it was even longer than it was. And all of us were very much ready for a break. Mm -hmm. um, mostly just from an artistic perspective. We wanted to go and do other projects like this one, like the ones that Carlos are doing and or individual music. And man, I'm so grateful, you know? It was definitely a big change, but I've, I've found myself leading films now that I wouldn't have had the opportunity to do if I was still, you know, spending all my time doing that. Yeah. And um, how do you balance it? Because you, you do have the music. Like, for example, in this in this movie, it's mostly, you know, you're acting in it. You're not performing, you know, and you have uh, Taylor Hicks, you know, American Idol winner, yeah. bring that song up on the stage and everything. How hard is it for you to kind of restrain yourself and not want to jump on stage and perform? <laughs> well, when you got a professional like Taylor Hicks up there, it's pretty easy. You get to sit back and uh, actually enjoy the concert and be a fan. Yeah. So look, I've always really enjoyed doing both. Um, being able to play a character, to be on set one location for a month or two or three is fantastic and very grounding, especially coming from tour. Right. But then after I do that, I want to get back in the studio and back on the road. So God willing, this year, I'll be able to do both. And that's okay. really all has always kept me grounded. You know, one, one leads into the other in terms of, uh, you know, entertainment begets entertainment. And it just kind of allows each side to feel fresh to me. Yeah, and you've hooked up with your best friend, a good friend, and you're a DJ as well. Like, wow, that's pretty Yeah, so that's where I've, I've pivoted to my personal music. Um, 
my best friend and I, as you pointed out, 15 years been talking about creating a project. And he's a literal prodigy, became the most successful instrumentalist, violinist in the world. Went out, has been producing for some of the biggest EDM artists in the world, just has like a side project for him. And cut to, we finally had some time together a couple of years ago and said, let's, let's do this, let's create. Didn't know what was gonna happen, but we started writing and creating and producing the best music we've ever done. So that's what we do now. We DJ produce right under LTX. And uh, I'm actually gonna be moving and getting a place in Vegas here pretty soon because we wanna build that market and yeah. you know, wanna keep playing music with my best friend. That's amazing, good, good for you. And I can't leave you without mentioning uh, Dancing with the Stars because look, you, you work hard, there's no question, but I can't imagine that doing that stint, like you did really well, uh, you know, that has <laughs> got to be one of the hardest things to do, especially if you're not a professional dancer. I can't imagine the rigorous training that goes into that. It's, um, you know, they sell you on it like it's not a big deal. Oh. <laughs> They're like, it's going to be easy. You know, you rehearse for a few hours, you need plenty of time to do whatever you want to do. No way. That's not true at all. You have zero time. Um, especially to your point, if you're not a professional dancer. Now, luckily I had some, you know, jazz, tap, ballet, basic yeah. experience from growing up performing art schools, but I'd never done ballroom. I had never done salsa. I had never done any classical training. So in order for me to compete at the level that I did, I had to work two, three times as hard as everybody. And that literally meant doing your full six, eight hours rehearsal. Then you're doing your two, three, four hours of fittings and press and all the other daily stuff. Yeah. And then going and practicing for a few hours after that every day. And I fit in a series called Sequestered on Sony Crackle towards the end of it. Yeah. Pretty much wasn't sleeping. So um, let's chalk it up to the most amount of fun that I'd never like to have again. <laughs> yeah, I, I totally understand. I totally, well, I, I was very, very happy I did it. Yeah. yeah, I love watching it, but there's just no way I could ever get anywhere close to what you did. So congratulations on I'm that. I'm sure you well, do great. It just takes, takes practice like anything else. But yeah, it was a great. wild, wild experience. Yeah, it's true. Listen, congratulations on everything. It's been lovely getting the chance to talk to you. And uh, this movie is adorable. I, I honestly hope you're going to, you know, are you, could you have more things coming down the bike post COVID that you're looking at in terms of movies and stuff too? Yeah, well, I mean, this is an incredible way to start off 2021. Um, I have two more movies coming out at some point this year that I lead. One's a more raunchy comedy called We Need to Talk, where I play a big video gamer and then one is called Wolfhound. It's a huge World War II action movie that wow. um, based on a true story that didn't come to fruition, thank God. But that one definitely hits close to home. Um, my grandfather flew B-17s in World War II and I play a P-51 pilot defending a B-17 that gets shot down. So yeah, I mean, great way to start this year with three movies coming out and Amazing. God willing, we'll be uh, back on set shortly and back playing music shortly. I hope so too. Well, come to Toronto when you can cross the border and come do a concert for us and maybe we can grab a coffee and meet in, in real life at some point. I would love that. <laughs> but thank you that. so much for your time and uh, best of luck. Congratulations with the, for the film and just stay safe and stay healthy. <laughs> Likewise. Thank you for your time. Pleasure thank chatting. You. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye.